Hi YouTube, uh, this is Dwayne here. Uh, so here we are, another uh, another week um, for a new Bible video going up, and uh, just a kind of continuation of what we did last week. Um, so last week we touched on Ephesians chapter two, and we began right at verse one, uh, went down to verse ten, and we learned a little bit about what that little phrase uh, "but God" means and its significance to us as believers. So, to recap, Paul was essentially having us remember that before we were brought into the family of God, we were essentially um, children of wrath. Let me bring that up here. Right here. Not only were we children of wrath, but by nature, uh, we were children of wrath. That is, by default. Now, he lists on a bunch of things that we, we tended toward, like, like lusts of our flesh, uh, desires of the flesh uh, and of the mind, basically doing what we want to do when we want to do it. We're prone to do that. Um, and then he puts this guy in here, but God, and then explains how through his rich mercy, um, he has saved us out of that um, by nothing more than his saving grace no works involved in that um, but just his grace his grace alone and then you see that he did that for the purpose of making us his workmanship so it can't be his workmanship um, unless it's him doing the working and so we sort of left off there so a quick recap, um, Ephesians written by Paul. Remember, he was in prison uh, and he had written this letter to the Gentile church. Now, that's going to be a very important distinction that he wrote this to the Gentile church um, in Ephesians. Um, so we're going to remember that. Wrote from prison to the Gentile church in Ephesians in order to encourage them. So let's take a look and we'll read the text and we'll go from there. So we'll go down to about verse 13 two verses, but hey, <laughs> there's a lot to unpack here. Um, so therefore, remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. You know, I'm going to highlight that because that is an important phrase. Uh, we'll come back to that. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. All right, so therefore, let's highlight that because this is an important word. Highlight. So therefore, always has us look back at what was previously said. I like what Stephen Lawson says about the word therefore. He says, if you see a therefore, find out what it's there for. <laughs> so remember we recapped last week and it was about us being children of wrath. But God in his mercy saved us according to his grace and made us his workmanship. So this is the thought process that we need to have in our mind when we come to this word, therefore. So knowing all of this, Paul writes and tells us to remember. To remember. Okay? And not only is this just remember, but it's actually an imperative verb here. Okay? An imperative verb is, is when we say an action as a command. So um, do this or do that. Do would be an example of, a, of an imperative. So we have an imperative commanding us to remember. So remember. So Paul is commanding us um, to remember that we, sorry, that you, okay, he's talking to the church uh, in this epistle. So we can say we, references to us. Once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision, okay, we were called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. So there's a distinction being brought out here now, okay, and that is between the Gentiles 
Gentile church and the Jewish church. So you got to remember that the Jews, part of their seal uh, for the covenants of promise was this symbolic act of circumcision, which was completed on the eighth day um, of a child's life. And it was to symbolize that they were part of the Abrahamic covenant uh, that was given to Abraham back in Genesis. Um, now, there is a definite phrase here that is sort of inserted awkwardly in the text, but it, it, it's in here for a purpose. Okay. Made in the flesh by hands, as if Paul is pointing out specifically um, that this was made in the flesh by human hands. Okay. This is something done by people. And the reason for this, I think, is because Paul here is juxtaposing that with the work of the Holy Spirit now. You remember um, that circumcision being a symbol of the covenant of Abraham. We have in... Um, in the New Testament now, let's see if I can find it real quick here. We have that symbol, which is now a seal of the New Covenant with the Holy Spirit of promise. So you can see that the New Testament changes things just a little bit here. So um, circumcision is no longer required as a seal because the Holy Spirit, which is poured out on us, is now that seal of the promise. So let's come back down here. So that's that's what he's doing here. So what he's suggesting is that the Jews of the day um, do not have any sort of special favor or any sort of leg up um, in a spiritual way because of a physical circumcision. Um, because now the physical circumcision has been replaced by a spiritual circumcision done in the heart. And you'll see that a little bit later on in the text. So uh, let's continue here. Now that at that time you were without Christ, referring to a time where there was no Christ available for them because he had not come yet and sacrificed. And he, he even shows here that they were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise. Okay, and these would have been the Abrahamic covenants back where circumcision was necessary. Of course, this changes slightly um, with the oncoming of the Holy Spirit and the, uh, the age of grace that comes through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And you'll notice that before he shows them as not having any hope um, and that they were without God um, in the world, as, as the text plainly says. Then we come here. But now, this is another important text, but now these, these little phrases are so important sometimes. Uh, but now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off, okay, far off from the promises, you see that phrase another time uh, in the same chapter, you once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. And that's ushering in this New Testament age uh, of grace, where the Holy Spirit is now poured on believers, the circumcision is done in the heart rather than in the flesh. Um, and as Gentiles, we're now brought in to the promises of God through the sacrifice of Jesus. So, a little bit much there, um, but I hope you're edified by this little little teaching here. It's been interesting for myself to go through it. I've been finding some really cool stuff and I'm super excited to share this. So um, I think what we'll do is uh, we'll stop there and we will continue on next week with Ephesians 2.14 uh, to 18. Um, there's some really interesting stuff here. And just as kind of like a, a side note, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances so as to create in himself one new man from the two. That, that's going to be a really interesting passage to look at. Um, so let's stop there. Uh, I hope you guys were blessed. Um, have a blessed day, uh, week, uh, whichever it is. And uh, we'll see you next week.
Christ.